Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve. This video is the first in a multi-part series on how I built this Bowfront jewelry box. If this box looks familiar, it's because about four years ago I built a similar box. I've changed a few things. I've changed some techniques to make it a little easier. And because of the nature of this video series, I intend on providing more details than was provided in the original video. As a result, expect this series and the videos in this series to be longer than usual. So if you don't like long videos, this video is probably not for you. This video is part one and will cover the construction of the carcass of this box. Before we get to the build, I'd like to give a shout out to Marcus Huber at Hoffman USA. And Hoffman USA has generously loaned me the use of a MU3PD benchtop dovetail joiner machine for use in my shop for a six month period. And I'm at the end of month five of that period now, so I'm going to have to make a decision soon on whether to purchase this machine or return it. But in any event, I thank Hoffman USA and Marcus for loaning me this machine. So let's get to the build. Here, here I'm resawing the sides. Uh, the, the piece I'm using is about 940 millimeters long. And I'm resawing the side on the, the it has the most sap wood. I want to get rid of as much of, of that as possible. The blade is a Lennox carbide tip, a 1.3 teeth per inch uh, one inch skip tooth blade. And I I resawed it stock started 20 millimeters thick and I ended up with uh, 15 and a half off the bandsaw. Now I'm at the planer and um, I'm pretty sure I went to about 15 millimeters here on the bandsaw face. And then I'm just going to clean up the opposite side face with a final pass down to 14 and a half millimeters. Note that I did lose the knot that was on that end. And here I'm putting it through the drum sander. This uh, the paper on it is 120 grit. And you can note the final sanding depth of 14.5 millimeters. And here I'm just uh, ripping the sides to a constant width. It was just slightly out because it was an off cut and it wasn't quite parallel. And here I'm at the shaper. I'm positioning the Comatic DC40 with a smart stand to mill the groove on the uh, for the back of the case. The groover is an Amana three-piece adjustable groover. And there's a kind of a gap between my normal adjustable groovers between seven and a half and eight millimeters. And wouldn't you know, this thickness of the back was 7.7 .7 millimeters. Here I'm at the sliding table saw. Blades tilted to 45 degrees, and I am uh, cutting the sides. I'm, I'm cutting them sequentially alternating between the stop block on the, on the saw fence and the stop block on the Fritz and Franz jig. This is to get sequential grain all the way around the outside. Of course, I've laid these out in sequential order such that I get grain match on the corners. The only one that won't match up is the fourth. And I've just put cross marks on each one of them to uh, show, the, show the configuration. Now what I want to do is cut the panel for the back. And here I'm using the airtight clamps. And that's primarily to hold the plywood flat 
The plywood is six millimeter Baltic birch ply and I've veneered it on both sides. And this is an off cut from the flag case build. And uh, that's why it's, it's such an odd shape. I am using a scoring blade with a combination blade. And I do get nice clean cuts on this on this plywood. So there's no there's no fuzzing on the uh, on the plywood edges to to clean off the sandpaper. So I just took it right off the saw and put it in the groove. Here I'm just checking the fit up, making sure I can close all four sides. I allowed one millimeter uh, clearance on all sides. Okay, so now I can either cut the joinery, and I'm going to be using Hoffman W2 keys with the oversized bit, or what I think I'm going to do is uh, cut the grooves for the drawer runners. And in the first video on this, I used a handheld router. It was just kind of a pain to cut the uh, stop dados for the, uh, for the drawer runners. So I'm going to try a different method here. What I've got is I've got three drawers that will be equally spaced, equal height, and I have 120, just over 120 millimeters. I've got the bit, quarter inch down cut spiral bit installed, and the height of the bit is equal to the depth of that rabbit, or the depth of this groove. Here the stop blocks are Cat's Moses stop blocks. I'm milling the center drawer groove first. The hardest part of this was getting the, the bit and fence set up to get that groove exactly in the center. And uh, upcoming is the check of how well I did. centered I am. It's like uh, 57 millimeters to the inside corner and 57 millimeters so I'm going to call that centered. Because of that I should be able to go the same way on the opposite corner or the opposite side. That when I finish the cut, I am allowing the turning off the router and allowing the cutter to come to a complete stop before I lift the piece off the table. Respect what I could have done instead of adjusting the fence again for this third cut, the third drawer runner. I should have just flipped the piece over and adjusted my stop blocks. Now I'm at the Hoffman MU3 machine and I'm milling W2 oversized uh, dovetail slots. Okay, and I have just a little bit of feather edge there where that groove is, so I think I'm good there. The depth of this cut is 
just around 64 millimeters deep. I'm using 60 millimeter P with an end cap over the uh, end, four millimeter deep. And I'm doing the back first. Okay, so that has all the uh, dovetail slots milled from the back of the box. I'm going to go for the front, and in order to account for that oh, 15 millimeters I'm going to take off, I need to, um, then I'll take off this, this front edge because the bow will come this way. I need to go deeper, and let's see how much I've got available. I'll just go 82 millimeters. And now I'll do the front edge. I've got all my dovetail slots uh, milled right now, and it's sized for a 60 millimeter long key in each direction, so I don't have to stack keys for this, uh, this assembly. Now what I want to do is go uh, mill up some um, material for to use as the drawer runners. So I've got a 1 8 inch roundover bit set up in the router table, and I'm going to make two passes. I'm going to go through this way and round it off, flip it over, and go the other way. Now I'm trimming off the uh, piece to the length of the uh, throw runners required. Here I'm adjusting the rip fence. I will be using this as a stop to rip off narrow pieces in combination with the Fritz and Franz jig. Ended up with a width of six millimeters, which is just shy of a quarter of an inch. And now I'm pulling the fence back to clear the blade so I don't get uh, cut off cuts trapped between the blade and the fence. Notice that I've got blue tape to try to keep the uh, off cuts from falling down into the chip guard and ended up with a dust collector. And the wooden piece on the trailing end of the blade is is called a deflector and it's magnetically attached to the table and its intent is to keep deflect the the off cut away from the blade so it doesn't kick back to you. Uh, it really didn't function like I intended in this video because it probably should have been adjusted further forward uh, but uh, anyway that's what that piece is. Here I'm taking a block plane and I'm just cleaning up one of the one face with the, of the sawn edge, and that's right before gluing. That will be the edge that gets glued. So I'm only gluing a couple inches. 
And when I get the three assembled, I pull a call across them and clamp them. And I don't want any squeeze out to deal with, so. And now I'm cleaning up the opposite side, uh, the saw marks. And here I'm gluing the carcass together. I'm using tight bond quick and thick glue because it just doesn't run all over the place. It tends to stick to the surface you apply it to. I'm using 60 millimeter long W2 keys to assemble the joints. Should go much deeper. millimeters 311 I've decided to try maple on the back see how it looks it looks good I'll uh, use it on the front too so I'm shooting for four millimeters I got 4.16. This is the Joint Maker Pro with the precision fence. Now I'm going to take 15 millimeters off of it and I should be about 25 millimeters deep and I'm 23 
Okay, so 23 will get me out to the very end, so if I make these 10 millimeter long, and I'm taking 15 off, that'll get me enough material, so I'm going to make these 10 millimeters, clamp this down. Measure this. We're shooting for 10. I got 10.2, so that'll be all right. Three more, and that should get me enough. Should be thirteen millimeters deep. Twelve point eight eight. I'm good. I'm good with that. Twelve point four. Twelve point seven. Well. So it doesn't seem like it's all the way in. I'm getting a lot more glue now, so it must have just been puddled up in there. Measure that again. Twelve point eight. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It was just glue puddled up in the uh, bottom, and it got a bit of a hydraulic lock to it. Okay, so I've let this uh, glue cure overnight, and after, sometimes you just have too much time to think. And I'm I'm hoping I made these keys uh, long enough because when I calculated the length, I did it based on how much I was taking off the outside and, and neglected the fact that I was going to have an arc. So this may end up being narrower than what I, what I anticipated. Uh, but as a tip, uh, take a, a round rod, burnishing rod or something, and if you, particularly if you have any openings here, but also to kind of knock that sharp corner uh, off and just kind of roll that edge over on these miters. And wood this wide, particularly flat sawn, has a tendency to cup. Um, so that's why I was I was kind of rushing to get this done in the same day to minimize that cupping, and I still had some. Now, one thing I, I would note, this was the first piece I cut off the bottom, so I expected the grain to match on this corner, and it, it does have a very nice match. And then you go around to the top, I expected a nice match here, and it's a nice match. And then here is also a nice match. I expected this one to be off, but it's really, 
it's really close other than some minor color variations this is really close to being almost a continuous grain my table was just slightly off so I ended up adjusting the square of the table to the blade to make this cut. The blade is a one quarter inch six tooth per inch uh, blade. And I'm staying to the outside of the line. On that side I was too far to the outside of the line. Just going to sand this trying to keep a, a uniform curve here and I'm a little heavy on this end and I, as I suspected I had the keys too deep here and on the opposite side I got much closer to the line so it's a lot closer but before I do this I want to check and make sure my table's square and it is I'm starting with 120 grit paper. This is a Kundig Unique Sander and it uses an 8 inch by 79 inch long belt. And if you keep that moving, don't leave it sit on the belt in one, one place, otherwise you'll get flat spots. And here I'm just checking the square to make sure the square of the table and the square of the belt are the, truly the same. One thing is I sand this along, I check periodically to make sure the depth to the back of the case to that front edge is the same on both sides. Here I'm using a 180 grit belt and I'll use a, another belt uh, I'll sand this all the way up to 220. So I got all these keys. They're all flush with the uh, surface, the, the maple keys. It, I think it has a nice contrast. And just knocking off sharp, sharp corners with 180 grit paper. And I think what I'm going to do, since I was sanding 220 cross grain on these sections, front and back, I'm going to hit those with... Uh, by hand sanding with the grain. So that wraps up part one of the video on building the carcass of the Bowfront Jewelry Box. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them below. I'll do the uh, best I can to answer them. So I thank you for your time and watching and your endurance. Have a great day.